Happy Halloween! Let's talk about the world of the hero. As I'm sure you've heard by now, The Lord of the Rings is getting a prequel movie this December, The War of the Rohirrim. About 250 years before The Lord of the Rings, the King of Rohan, Helm Hammerhand, refuses to wed his daughter to Wolf of the Westmarch, which leads to a war between the Rohirrim and the Dunlendings, culminating in the siege of a Hornberg during the Long Winter. I will not spoil how it ends, but all you really need to know is that this place was renamed Helm's Deep in honor of Helm's legendary exploits during this time. That's a short synopsis of the story as it's told in the Return of King Appendices, which all in all is like two pages. Which means that just like Rings of Power, this movie is going to have to flesh out these pages, adding characters, backstories and action set pieces. I will not say that it's just going to be an original story and original characters with a Tolkien label slapped onto it, but judging from how much of the marketing has been centered around Helm's previously unnamed daughter, now reimagined as Hera, a shield maiden like Eowyn, it's obvious they're not content with just telling the story as it's presented in the book. Now as usual with these things I try not to hype things up too much in advance. My first concern is going to be, is it a good movie? Similarly, just because I'm an anime fan and generally like the aesthetic that they're going with, I'm not going to preemptively treat this as going to be the next Princess Mononoke. In fact, just this sword out on line ass outfit is making me worry that it's going to be with two anime. However, I'm not just going to shoot this down immediately either. One huge edge this has over Rings of Power is that it's a New Land Cinema slash Warner Brothers production, meaning that it's within the same intellectual property as Peter Jackson's movies. As you can see, this is not just a version of Edras, it's THE Edras from the movies. And while it will not have Howard Shore as composer, it will have full access to his themes, which the marketing has made quite clear. Do note that this music is taken straight from the Lord Rings soundtrack, it's not part of a new score, which will be made by Stephen Gallagher who is no stranger to Middle-earth. He worked as a music editor on the Hobbit movies and composed a few songs. To come up with the music for Blunt the Knives, we turned to Steve Gallagher, who's one of our music editors, but is also a wonderful composer himself. I don't think any variation of the Rohan theme that we heard in promotional material has been composed by him, and therefore we can't know for certain whether or not he will use it. Now you might say, Mono, we watch Nerd of Rings, we already know this. Why is this worth its own video? Has this finally devolved into a reaction channel, a slave to the algorithm? Well you see, the whole reason I made this video is because of this teaser, or more specifically the music in it. The moment I heard this, I could instantly tell that what we listen to is Hera's theme, because it's clearly inspired by Eowyn's theme. If you remember, Eowyn's theme and all its variations has a strong opening fifth. Also, these stepwise moving three note motifs are very similar to the Fellowship B phrase. But if you dig a bit deeper, you can find an even closer connection to Eowyn's theme here. In the first shot of Eowyn in the Two Towers, we hear this. This, as Doug Adams describes, is a sort of embryonic Eowyn theme, a hint of what's to come. If you combine these two elements into one, you get Hera's theme, a sort of musical ancestor of Eowyn's theme. Now I know that this is just speculation, except it's not. Stephen Gallagher confirmed it himself. I asked him about this composition on Instagram, and straight from the horse's mouth, it's supposed to act as a precursor of what will eventually revolve into Eowyn's theme. You know what this means? It means that not only are we going to get Howard Shaw's beloved themes again, but new themes and a whole new score intently crafted to be part of the same universe. Apart from the Rohan fanfare, we might get themes like Mordor and Isengard, and the used Rise of Rohan theme, Weakness and Redemption, A Noble End. Now, once again, I'm going to try to restrain my expectations, but uh, just from this little interaction, I would be lying if I said that my anticipation of this movie hasn't grown a lot. So I'll see you in December, I guess.